Today I'll be explaining how I created an augmented reality holiday card using Adobe Aero. This will be a brisk walkthrough of my build process, so hold on to your seats. I'll be able to explain the whole thing start to finish in under 9 minutes. I'm dragging and dropping my assets directly into the Adobe Aero interface. Most of these are GLB files that I exported from Blender or ping sequences that I exported from After Effects. I'm just scaling and positioning them. You can do that a couple different ways, either by typing in the coordinates directly or by using the arrows that are attached to each of the elements. Once I have all of these objects positioned appropriately, I will add some interactivity, which is where the fun begins. So this is a squirrel, which is a ping sequence that I animated in After Effects, exported into a folder, and then zipped up, and I dragged and dropped that into the Adobe Arrow interface. I'll finish positioning this, and then we can add interactivity by going to the Behavior Builder, hitting Trigger, selecting Start, go to Action, select Play Images. This is a ping sequence, remember, select Infinite. Now that we have that behavior set up, I'm going to duplicate the file by selecting it and hitting this Duplicate button and I'm going to sprinkle them throughout the scene. Not only is this more efficient, but it'll also make the world feel more alive. Lots of little subtle animations and interactive elements will really add depth to your experience. Okay, now let's add some more interactive bits. Uh, let's do this cardinal, which is again a ping sequence, a, a flight animation cycle that I created in After Effects then exported as a ping sequence. Again, put it in a folder, then zipped it up and brought it into Arrow. Let's go ahead and position it just right. I've set up this scene before, so I actually know exactly where I want these little birdies to go. Now, let's set up a behavior. Go down to the Behavior Builder, bottom left, hit Trigger, hit Inner Proximity, and then type in 100 centimeters. We don't want to have to be too close. Select Action, then Play Images, because this is a ping sequence. And let's up the play count to about 10. I don't want it to be infinite in this case. Hit the plus button, select move, and let's move this up. This is on the y-axis, so 125. We'll change the duration to something like eight. And I'll also change the x offset just so that it moves forward a little bit too. And then I'm gonna go to the second column, hit action, select hide, and I think I'll change the duration, make it a little longer. And we're good to go. Let's duplicate this. And again, I'm just going to sprinkle these throughout the scene. The idea is that once a user gets too close to one of these birds, they'll actually fly away as if they're startled. Move these around. Like I said, I've created the scene before, so I know exactly where these are going. I'm just going to type in those coordinates. And all right, let's add some more interaction. Now I hit number one, which allows me to pivot around the scene. Number two allows me to pan. I use a combination of one and two to basically just check out my scene, make sure that the layout is as I would like it. Everything looks fine to me. So let's keep going with the interactions. Switch to the cursor. I'm going to select, let's see, the house and add a trigger, which is a tap trigger to play images. So this is a ping sequence, which is the house front. Now I'm gonna add another play images and change the subject to house inside, which is a separate ping sequence. I've layered two ping sequences on top of one another so that when you tap the first one, they both play. Now I'm adding the exact same tap behavior to the hill that the house is attached to. I like giving multiple paths to the same interaction. That ensures that your user will find the gem that you've hidden. Now let's animate that turkey. Select it, we're gonna go behavior, select a tap trigger, do play images, because again, this is a ping sequence. I'm gonna select infinite, and I'm also gonna add a move action. I'm gonna move this, let's see, just about 25 centimeters and at about 10 seconds duration, set infinite back and forth. And I'm just gonna preview this animation to make sure that it's it looks good. I think that's a little slow, actually. So I'm going to switch this duration, I think, to something shorter, like eight. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, now let's go ahead and just double check that 
all my interactions seem to be there. They do. Okay, let's add one to this box den. Let's add a trigger for tapping. I'm gonna hit action, go to play images. This is a ping sequence again. And I don't want it to loop, so I'm not going to select infinite, but I am gonna say the same sort of tap trigger to the hill that the fox den is located on. Again, trying to create duplicate methods for discovering these little animations. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for the squirrel. We're gonna do a trigger, tap, action to play images. And again, I don't want this one to loop, so I'm not gonna select infinite. I'm gonna add the exact same play images, tap trigger to the hill that the tree is on. Now let's add ambient animation to this cloud. Go to trigger, start, action to move. And we're gonna set this to something big, like 100 centimeters. Maybe preview this with the play button. That's, um, that's cool. Let's make it a long one. That's clearly too fast, so about 40 seconds. We'll select infinite and back and forth. Now we're going to add the same sort of behavior to the other two clouds, just with slightly different settings. Since it's a start trigger, the animation will begin as soon as the scene is launched. Again, I can just use this play button to preview. Make sure that it's looking good. Yep, looks good to me. Let's do the third guy. Trigger, start, action, to move. Changing the X to something maybe negative, like negative, I don't know, 50? Not quite as long as the other one. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And let's change the duration to something a little bit longer, uh, like 30 seconds. I'm gonna preview that real quick. Yeah, that's nice and slow. Maybe, yeah, maybe just a little bit faster. Okay, select infinite, back and forth, and now the clouds are ready to go. Let's add a trigger to this plane. Trigger to start, action to aim, and we're gonna set the aim target to camera. We're gonna add another action, this time orbit, and make sure that the camera is the subject or the center. And let's change the duration to 35 and infinite. So what this is gonna do is it's constantly going to aim at the camera, which is your user, and it's gonna orbit around them. Let's give a test by hitting preview. Tap some of my other animations, make sure everything is working. Yes, and it seems to be working just fine. Now, one thing I'm noticing is that all of the squirrel tails are wagging at the same time. So I'm gonna create a little bit of variation. Select one of them, go to play images, and I'm gonna add a slight delay to the animation starting, just one second. And let's add a slightly different one to this squirrel, add a delay of, hmm, Half a second. If you're going to use duplicate assets, which is a good idea for file size efficiency, add a little bit of variation between them. That will make your world feel more authentic. And here's the completed piece. If you'd like to try it yourself, I'll put the link below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll be posting more tutorials as well as videos about my adventures in mixed reality and my artistic process. Until then, happy making and happy holidays.